Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about interpolation functions which are also referred to as shape function or geometric function uh, because they describe the shape of our element based on the nodal variables. Uh, so for to find the shape function here we are considering a bar element. A bar element is the 1D element that has displacement only in one direction in X. X would be our global coordinate. So if we are assuming that we are meshing our member with multiple elements with node number 1, 2, 3 till n, and then we are looking into an arbitrary element of i with nodes i and j, we could develop our equation based on this element. And since this element is the same as other bar elements, then we could assemble all our elements into uh, a larger stiffness matrix. Let's look at this uh, bar element. It has two nodes, and if the length of element is L, the coordinate of the first node would be negative L over two, if we assume that the coordinate zero point would be the middle of the element. And the second node has uh, positive L2. We also use a dimensionless uh, coordinate system, KC, which is ranging from negative one uh, to one. Uh, so here in this table you can see the local coordinates and the global coordinates. So x, y, and z are our global coordinates and for local we use uh, the Greek uh, letters of C, eta, and zeta. Because we are only dealing with 1D here, we are just going to refer to uh, C. Uh, so and then the relation between x and C is L over 2 C. So when C is negative 1, x would be negative L over 2. And when C is 1, x would be positive L over 2. If the displacement of node 1 is u1 and the displacement of node 2 is u2, we are going to find the displacement between the two nodes. Hence the name interpolation. We are going to interpolate between the two nodes to find a displacement at any location within the element. Uh, the easiest uh, solution would be to interpolate with a linear function because we have two nodes, we have two variables, uh, we can interpolate in using a linear function as function of Kc, our coordinate. This linear function has two unknown coefficients of C0 and C1 but we have two boundary conditions, so we can find these two unknowns. We know at C equals negative one, our displacement is U1, therefore if we replace it, U1 would be C0 minus C1. At C equals one, our displacement would be U2, and if we replace it, we get the second equation. So two equations and two unknowns, we can find our unknown coefficients. And if you plug it into our linear equation, I can find the displacement as function of the coordinate based on the nodal variable, based on the nodal displacement. So if I have the nodal displacement of U1 and U2, for any location of KC, I can find the displacement. So I interpolate it between the two nodes. So interpolation function is defined as the behavior of the displacement field within an element in terms of the nodal values and it doesn't have to be displacement field it uh, has to uh, is related to nodal variables the nodal values could be temperature could be uh, heat flux could be displacement and so if i write the equation again i can represent it in form of uh, nodal displacement and uh, shape functions uh, so here is a row matrix and this is a column matrix in a column uh, in a matrix format. The first component I call it n1 shape function of node 1 and the second element the second component would be n2 the shape function of node 2. So I can write my uh, displacement as function of m1 and n2 u1 uh, u2 where u1 and u2 are nodal displacement and uh, the n1 and n2 are a shape function and node 1 and 2. So if I want to uh, plot the shape function at C equals negative 1, n1 will become 1, that would be 1 minus negative 1, so 2 over 2 would be 1, and at C equals 1, 
and one would be zero. So if I plot n1, that's how the shape function would look like. If I do the same thing for n2, if I plot n2, let's can see negative one, one plus negative one would be zero. So n2 at this node would be zero and at uh, the second node would be one. So we can get multiple properties of shape function based on just this simple example. Uh, because we have two nodes, we have two shape functions. The shape functions are one at this node and they are zero at any other nodes. And the summation of the shape function would be one at anywhere in the element. So here it would be one, here if you add them together it would be one, and here and two is one, the other one is zero, so the, the addition of the two would be one. Uh, so now that we found the displacement within an element, we can find the strains. So we know the relation between uh, our coordinates, the uh, KC, which is the unitless coordinate, and X in a unit in uh, unidirectional uh, axial uh, loading strains is simply displacement over x and because u is function of kc i have to use the chain rule du over dkc dkc over dx and based on the relation between the two coordinates i know dkc over dx would be 2 over l and if I take a derivative of u with respect to kc here, take a derivative, I get negative 1 over 2 here and then 1 over 2 here. And then I have the coefficient of 2 over l. So that's my strain. And if I just multiply these uh, two metric matrices, that's the value that I get for strain, which is uh, what we expected. The displacement of the second node minus the displacement of the first node divided by the length of the element. And but more important conclusion is that uh, this value would be constant. So for a linear interpolation, if you take a derivative of a linear function, it would be a constant value. So the strains are constant within each element. And uh, here you can see the displacement is continuous, but the strains are constant within each element. So if I move from one element to another element, I have this continuity here. So for a linear interpolation, we can conclude that the displacement is continuous, but the strains are discontinuous. So then there would be a question of what would be the nodal displacement? If we have one node here, another node here, at this node, we have two different strains because this node is connected to the two elements. Here, the, if we have R, J, K, our element M and our element M plus one, they're gonna have different strains and this node is connecting the two elements. So the nodal strain would be the average of the two uh, element strains. Um, nodal strains, uh, strains are defined for element. So nodal strain is usually reported for visual purposes when you are, when you have, uh, when you model in ANSYS or Abacus or other FEA software. So technically this uh, would not have any uh, specific meaning because a strain, we, we need length. For stresses, we need area. Uh, if we have a discontinuity material. Let's say this is a carbon fiber and this is the plastic around it and at the border of the two we have discontinuity material. Or here we have discontinuity in the geometry between the two uh, geometries. Then nodal strains are not defined. So the nodal strains would be meaningless when we have geometric or material discontinuity. But if our, we have continuity in material and geometry, we could define an order of strain at the average between the two uh, elements. If we want higher accuracy, we can uh, increase the order of our elements. So instead of dealing with linear, we could deal with uh, quadratic. For quadratic elements, we have uh, three nodes. So this is one element with three nodes. We are using our natural coordinates or local coordinate KC from negative one to one. We have uh, 
uh, three nodes, so our interpolation function would be quadratic. We have three unknown coefficients, but because we have a three boundary condition at the negative one, zero, and, and one, then we can find the unknown coefficients and we could report them in terms of a shape function. Because we have three nodes, we have three shape functions, n1, n2, and n3. So the properties of shape functions are, are the same as linear. At its node, the shape function would be one. Here is one, and it would be zero at the other two nodes. Same thing for n2, is one and zero at the other two nodes. n3 would be one at node three, and zero at the other uh, two nodes. You can even find that by looking at the equation. If we plug in k c equals one, that would be one plus one squared, so two divided by two would be one. That's one way to uh, check whether the nodal function that you have found are correct. We can go even higher in, in the order of element and model our uh, element by uh, cubic interpolation. For cubic interpolation, so we have uh, four nodes. And again, this is uh, one element. So it might look like as a uh, three linear element, but it's one cubic interpolation. And you can see that the interpolation function is cubic. Uh, we have uh, four unknown coefficients, but we also have four nodes and four boundary conditions. So we can find our unknown coefficients and therefore our interpolation function because we have four nodes, we have n1, n2, n3, and n4. The properties are the same, n1 is one at node one and zero at the other node. Same thing for n2, n3, and uh, n4. So here I'm listing the properties of shape function. They are developed to interpolate between the nodal values. Uh, I showed you polynomial functions, but we can use uh, trigonometric functions uh, as well. Each node has a shape function. So if you have two nodes, we have two shape functions. If you have 10 nodes, we have 10 shape functions. Uh, the value of shape function is one at its node and zero at any other nodes. The sum of shape functions are, are one anywhere within an element. Here you can see the shape function for a bar, a linear, quadratic, and, and cubic. Sometimes for higher order elements, it's, it's better to use more number of elements with linear interpolation than uh, one cubic element. So beam element looks the same as bar element, it's a linear element, but the nodal variables are different. For a beam element, we are talking about deflection. We are talking about transverse displacement and because we have transverse displacement, so we have slope as well. So we have two nodes, but each node has two degrees of freedom. So each beam element has four degrees of freedom. So we can interpolate it by cubic function here, and then we have four uh, unknowns. Because we have four uh, boundary conditions, we could find all our unknowns. At k c equals negative one, we know the deflection is v1 and also the slope would be theta1. So the slope is simply the derivative of deflection with respect to x. But we have developed everything based on kc, so we have to use the chain rule again. And dkc over dx is 1 over a, because we know the relation between x and kc. At kc1, x is a. At kc negative 1, x is negative a. So I can find the derivative of kc with respect to x. So I can write my other two boundary condition. v kc would be v2 and theta would be theta2. That would be one over a. So I have four unknown coefficients and then I can find the four unknown coefficients by the four boundary conditions uh, that I have. And then I could have my four shape functions. So here we have uh, two nodes, but because each node has two degrees of freedom, then we have four uh, shape functions. Uh, here, I'm showing you the four shape functions. So N1 and N2 are 
referring to the first note, N3 and N4 are related to second note. So N1 is the shape function for the displace for the transverse displacement for V1. So at node 1 is 1 and at any other node is 0. Here N2 is referring to the slope of node 1. So the slope at node 1 would be 1. The magnitude is now 1. You can see the magnitude is 0, but the slope would be 1. Here N3 and N4 are referring to the second node. So N3 would be 1 at node 2 and the slope of N4 would be 1 at node 2. If you were going to evaluate this shape function to see if they are correct, you could look at this one and see whether the slope at node 1 would be actually 1. So if you want to take a derivative of N2, our second shape function with respect to x, we have to use the chain rule because our shape function is based on Kc. Again, dx, dkc over dx would be 1 over a. We can take a derivative of the second shape function with respect to kc. If I take a derivative of the second function, the first will be 0. I have negative 1, negative 2 kc plus 3 kc squared. And 1 over a, and I have a4 as a coefficient. If I place the first node, coordinate which is kc equals negative 1 I get the value of 1 that's how I know that this, the shape function is, is correct for interpolation functions we have two methods h method and p method so h method is based on quadratic shape function and if you want a higher accuracy you need to increase your number of elements or refine your mesh p method is based on higher order shape function also you specify a specific degree of accuracy that you require or refer to as P level and the program automatically uh, refine your mesh until it matches that uh, accuracy so it has the advantage that no manual reform refinement is required but also it makes it a little bit complex and it's only applicable to linear static structural uh, problems in ANSYS, if you go to ANSYS uh, APDL, uh, it used to uh, give you options for H method and P method, but the new version only gives you the option for H method. So it raises the question why it's even there. But I assume that they're going to bring back the, the, the P method. Or at least uh, they want to tell you that uh, the analysis is using H method. So it's very important to know the, the difference between the two and uh, you write a report or, or read a read a report.